Hi. Uh, I'm just setting up my. I've run out of uh, bytes on the on the little micro discs that I have, and I'm just setting up um, my Canon uh, camera, and I'm hoping that I've got this in focus and it's in the right place and it's, it's kind of difficult to to see how's that no it's got to go down okay, that's as far as it will go down so that may be okay um i just thought i'm i'm finishing off the a modification that I'm doing on the tailstock on my new tailstock and um, I'm putting in a, a, a brass a dovetail um, I'll give you a quick look at what I've done That's good. okay um, this is the the new do uh, tailstock that I made and I was having trouble um, I fixed both of these plates with the dovetail with the angle on a 45 and I had a, a problem let's see if I can swing that round a little bit I hope that goes hope you can see that yeah um, I, I had a problem with I got it a nice fit sliding on um but i could never get rid of the lateral movement because the dovetail had to be perfect to eliminate any play so um what i decided to do was to um machine out machine out this section of the plate here and and eliminate the dovetail and make a kind of a pocket there that and then I made up a brass triangular strip I hope you can see that um, and that was made from a uh, the same material as I have in here um, this I, I got from work when I was working uh, it's a kind of a commercial a commercial bronze or or a commercial brass uh, they used to use a lot of this stuff on the uh, auto machines um, making screws and, so, and such for uh, uh, thermostatic controls and it, it machines very nicely it's like a brass I guess it is a brass but it may have a little bit of more copper in it maybe um uh it's kind of got a coppery a coppery look about it it's kind of a a pinkish haze on the material anyway um i've used uh because it's handy um i've used uh sections of this stuff on different projects and so what i did was i made up this um triangular uh, strip to fit inside of here and to act as a dovetail but a movable dovetail for clamping and so um, what I did was um, I, I milled this section out here and then I, I drilled and tacked for uh, 540 screws two 540 screws and then I used a couple of dowels as well because I didn't want this thing whenever I removed the the uh, the this section off of the the main block I didn't want it falling out so <coughs> I used a couple of these uh, needle rollers Torrington needle rollers that I use as dowels and so um, I've got two dowels in there 
and of course I, I was limited to the amount of, that I could spread them but at least they keep keep it in place when it's not on the uh, uh, when it's not on the uh, on the main block um, so that goes in there like that and of course I've got this thing out it needs reassembling really um, don't know if I can do it but anyway it presses it presses onto the the two dowels through those two dowel holes there and that keeps it located uh, but it allows it to move to to clamp and to release um, and it works really great so I think what I've done is I've I've solved the problem of this lateral movement every time I was getting uh, if you see in some of my in some of my videos um, I had to place a, a block at the base here uh, at the back to support it whenever I was drilling or using a, a center because because just with this this bolt going down and and clamping it it wasn't sufficient to stop this thing from moving so um, I, I, I can do away with that now if I want to um, and this works great um, so in the meantime I have to make up a couple of uh, knurled uh, knobs to fit onto the heads of these 540 screws so that I can just nip them up by hand so I decided to continue and use this kind of material and so when I started machining I thought I wonder how big a cut I can take um, uh, off of this material uh, in one cut and so um, as usual I'm not I'm not prepared this everything happens all of a sudden with me um, so this is half inch um, diameter just double check mm -hmm. yeah that's half inch and this cut that I've taken started taking is 350 so it's about 150 thou 350 for yeah about 100 150 155 um, thou off the diameter so I just thought I'd I'd set the camera up while I've got the other one charging and um, and give a, a, a little demonstration um, I I found that with the other problem I had of the motor stalling on me um, I think I've got a better a better um, uh, result now uh, so what I've done is I've, I've placed the belt on the smallest motor pulley and the largest on the spindle and that means that when I open up the control panel or the control uh, uh, motor control um, I have to turn it right the way round and when I turn the knob right the way round to maximum I get an RPM value of, of uh, 1500 RPM so I've come to the conclusion that the further that I can turn that um, the control knob around uh, I'm going to get a better torque I'm not sure about that I, this is just a theory of mine but I think I'm you're gonna get a, a better torque from the motor um, I had it on a larger uh, pulley on uh, on the central pulley or the se second from largest and I found that when I had the motor running at low speed um, 
it would stall the job that I was cutting with and and that would be even maybe a, a 30 or 40 thou cut so I think I've eliminated that problem as well so I'm I'm now thinking about in the future of, of, a, of a tooth belt and different pulley uh, system on the on the uh, motor and the spindle so but that's all in the future uh, just thought I'd give you a little demonstration I think it's gonna work um, I could be wrong um, so I've got a hundred and fifty thousand cut taking place or total so in actual fact I've got uh, 75 75 thou I guess yeah um, and I got the machine running at 645 so I'm going to take a cut now and see what happens it, it judders a little bit at the beginning because it's sticking out about close to two inches inch and a half inch and three quarter so we'll see what happens it on the slowest speed, speed.